Is computer science worth it? Is AI gonna take over? They will be cooked for their entire 50 year long career. And literally within a couple of weeks, I got a better internship offer and I was like, thank God I didn't get that one. In fact, the best thing that will propel you is what I call Computer science is in shambles right now. I did everything right. I went to a great college, had great grades, had a great major, but that's not good enough to give me a job. What's your major? Comp sci. Oh, sh here you go. Yo! <laughs> it's the hardest major with the highest dropout rate. No one can find a job and AI is slowly taking over. And so in this video, I'm gonna give you the exact blueprint that you need to navigate the situation. Precisely, I'm gonna be talking about things that you need to stop doing because they're wasting your time and actually hurting your career. And without further ado, let's get started right away. The topic that I wanna talk to you guys about is preparations for a degree in tech. Because it's not as straightforward as you go through high school, you focus on your grades, you focus on your extracurriculars, you write a good essay, boom, you get into college. That's the way. It's not as straightforward as that when you're trying to go from college to the industry. It's very, very different. And there are certain things that are more valuable when it comes to what you get out of your college and some things that aren't. And so today I'm going to talk about two things that really don't matter as much as people kind of glorify them to, and then two things that you probably should pay attention to more that actually do matter a lot. So the first thing that doesn't really matter as much as people hype it up to is GPA and classes. GPA is what, we, what I call an academic metric. It's very important in high school, you have a good GPA so that you're able to get into college. In college, if you have a high GPA, sure, it'll help you get into potentially further grad schools. It'll help you get research opportunities, teaching assistant opportunities, everything within the academic realm. But no employer, no recruiter is going to be like, oh shoot, you have a really high GPA? Let me now put you in charge of this million dollar product. Join our team as a full stack engineer. No one thinks like that because it's an academic metric, not a career metric. And that's to say, not that you go to college and just start partying around, don't worry about your grades, but it's to say that focus on your education, but not to the degree such that it trumps the other things that do matter. Because your education and the ability to pass your classes, get A's, get B's, all that stuff, is limited in terms of the reward for it. If you get a 4.0 GPA in high school, you might be eligible for top tier colleges but you get a 4.0 GPA in college, that does not make you eligible top tier for top tier tech industry firms or companies that you might be interested in. It's a very different uh, metric. Once again, it's academic versus career. Now, when we look at classes, especially for example, within a computer science degree, I can talk from my own experiences. There were a lot of classes that really did not matter into making me a proper engineer as I am today. For example, a lot of these like math-based classes, like discrete math, applied combinatorics, you know those problems where it's like, uh, how many permutations are in the word Mississippi? Or how many ways can you like shuffle a deck of cards, right? All that stuff is cool theory foundational components behind like computing, but after I had passed those classes, I can't remember a single time I was asked how many permutations are of the word Mississippi. Like a lot of this math stuff really doesn't come to you unless you pursue a more math intensive field such as like theoretical machine learning, theoretical statistics, some or even some of the data science people that I was talking to, like that's where it comes into, but most of like the engineering, like software engineering, data engineering, to a certain degree, the math doesn't come in as much as it's emphasized in university. Now, there's a caveat with this. Unlike GPA, which I really don't think is a focus, there are some classes that I think are very, very valuable. Data structures, algorithms, object-oriented programming are excellent sources to build your foundational components to just like understanding the world of computing. There are also some other ones like Intro to Software Engineering. It'll teach you like how like the real world is. I've also taken some pretty cool classes in college. I took Game AI in which I developed these like enemy bots for this video game in which we would literally, like our optimization was would to be like destroy the main character as much as we can, which is really cool and unique and something I couldn't really get outside of college. Additionally, I took this class called Ubiquitous Computing, which was developed by the guy named Thad Storner. He actually developed Google Glasses. So that was a super kind of like unique class that I couldn't get outside of university. So while you're in university, 
What I would really encourage you guys to do, instead of focusing on trying to get the highest grades in every single class you can, try to find out what is unique about this university that I'm going to. And th those are excellent, for example, like talking points when you're applying to college, like for your supplemental essays. What are these unique points, unique classes, unique professors that are only offered at this university that I can't get at any boot camp, any like course outside of this that I can maximize truly? And you can honestly find out like, what are some cool, unique research opportunities? What are the professors who are getting paid the most amount of dollars to be at this university? What cool things are they doing? Look at PhD labs and tr try to join them as soon as possible. Because regardless of if you're a freshman, sometimes even when you're a senior in high school, you could be eligible for some George Mason research lab opportunities. Get those experiences early on. So then when you actually do become a college student, when you actually do enter university for the first time, you could be like, hey, I already have some background research opportunities, not opportunities, experience. I can translate this into helping your lab out here. Try to maximize what you can while, while you're in college. So that's the first thing that doesn't matter. GPA and classes with the slight caveat. Second thing that doesn't matter as much as people think is what I call your firsts. So your first exam in your first class at university, you're probably not going to do your best. Your first internship, you're probably not going to get your dream internship. Your first job right out of college, you're probably not going to get the best highest paying job. And I'm not saying that to discourage anyone, but to rather to kind of shift reality expectations. I have a motto. If it doesn't matter in five years, it doesn't matter more than five minutes. Now, a lot of people like have a lot of fear and anxiety when it comes to kind of like the tech world, the tech market. In fact, like one time I was at the gym and this guy came up to me, he's like, hey, is computer science worth it? Is AI gonna take over? Is, is this like, are, are we cooked? And I'm like, bro, I'm just trying to do it in my workout. Uh, but like, it just kind of shows to say that like, people are scared of what's to come. And if they don't optimize for every single minute, every single second of their existence at this moment, they will be cooked for their entire 50 year long career. And I'm here to tell you that that's not true whatsoever. In fact, in my first software engineering internship, I worked at Amazon and my manager, you know what he majored in college? Physics. I'm pretty sure he didn't write a, like a code in college till like way later on in his master's or PhD. But physics, you can have so many career pivots. You can change up everything that you're doing. You are not done for just because you make one bad decision in college or you decide to pick a slightly different career than what you actually are to end up pursuing. And once again, that's fine. Like pursuing a major and maybe you spend Instead of four years in college, you end up spending five or six years in college. But because of that, you end up having a better, like fulfilling career that ends up paying you way more. In the grand scheme of things, those extra two years in terms of a 40 to 60 year long career, does that really matter? 50 years down the line, are you going to be like, dang, I really wanted to intern at Google that summer, but I didn't get it. Oh, man. And now I'm 40 years old and I'm absolutely cooked. Like, no, that no, no one thinks like that. It's just that sometimes we're very short sighted. And I'm not saying that I'm like better than anyone. I, I was exactly the same thing like you guys. I'm only like a couple years older. I was going through the same thing. I wanted to get the highest paying industry. I wanted to get the highest job out of college. But like at, at the end of the day, whether that happened or not is independent to where I'm headed to in the future. Try not to be so nearsighted and think long term of what your career is going to be. Maybe you don't want to be an engineer your whole life. Maybe you want to go into management or maybe you don't want to work in big tech. Maybe you want to take the startup road, the entrepreneurship road, and maybe like scale up your career through that. There's so many different opportunities that just because something doesn't work exactly to a T, exactly to your plan, that does not mean that your career is over. In fact, uh, when I was applying for my first in software internship, the fall semester before I worked at Amazon, I applied to so many different companies, hundreds, hundreds of offers, or, sorry, not offers, interviews, rejections, uh, applications. In fact, li like there was one company that was kind of like giving a lot of interview offers that like my friends had gotten an offer from. And I was like, dang, I just missed them like by a couple minutes at the career fair. And I was kind of feeling a little down about it. But then literally within a couple of weeks, I got a better internship offer and I was like, thank God I didn't get that one because otherwise I would have had to accept that and potentially renege that or potentially accept a worse or like internship offer. So you never really know where your career is headed. One rejection could literally be like a launch pad for, for a totally different direction. So literally, I guess, don't give up. Don't be so anxious about the present because your career and life should be way longer than what you see currently in your path. So those are two things that don't really matter. 
First thing is GPA classes to a certain degree, and then what I call your first or like the current state. What does actually matter? Two things, once again. First thing I'm going to talk about is networking. While you're here at an excellent school like TJ, you are miles ahead of most other high school students because you're in a gifted program. You had to apply here, you had to essentially kind of be vetted out before you got into the school, and you're also given many advanced classes, many advanced opportunities that not many other students have. Now, sure, you, you guys all might be friends and all that, but really see like what unique projects each of you are doing. If you are new here and you don't know anyone here, try to introduce yourselves to other people. Not because it might immediately help you, not because anyone here necessarily has the next billion dollar business, but five, 10 years down the line, your same exact peers could be running literally like the whole tech industry. Hopefully, right? <laughs> um, and while you're in university, hopefully you guys are trying to go for the best universities that you can afford. There, you're gonna be surrounded by extremely qualified individuals. They came from all the different TJs. You're here in a TJ of Virginia, but all the gifted and talented programs all across America are gonna be meeting up at one college. Network with everyone. Talk about their unique experiences. Later on in your career, you might be like, huh, I really, I I'm trying to start this startup, but I don't know any engineering talent. Hmm. Well, actually, let me hit this buddy up that I was friends with in high school. I can I see he's this big tech engineer. I want to draw him and maybe we can create a startup. Most startups or I won't say most, but some startups are literally just a coding project that have a paywall behind them. At least that's how they start. So you never know like where, where your network can take you. And your network is not just exclusively to your peers. When you're in college, I want you to network with professors. Your professors are the ones who, are, who might be writing your recommendation for grad school, for research programs. Your professors are the ones who maybe are winning like excellent awards, maybe that you wanna work with. Like for example, the, the class I took that was designed by the person who made the Google Glasses, right? Like being able to network and be in that presence just naturally excels your own knowledge and, that, and maybe sometimes it doesn't even have to excel your knowledge, it can motivate you in a certain direction. It can give you a certain idea that you maybe not don't know ahead of time. Also like, your, your peers are gonna be working at all the best tech companies. Right now, I am very gratefully through my time at Georgia Tech, I've networked a lot. And now anytime I like need a referral for any tech company, which could be at any of like the top Facebook, Amazon, Google, or literally any of the big tech companies, I have someone I can reach out to because they're just some friends that I had in college. So your network, you really don't know what it can lead to. You know, when they say like your network is your net worth, like that can't really be more true. You, it's just excellent what you can do with the people around you. Additionally, when you do enter university for the first time, try not to stick to just your peers who are other freshmen. Try to network with a lot of upperclassmen because they are people who have been through the internship process. They know exactly how career fairs operate at your school. They know exactly how certain classes are. Well, one of the best things that I did when I got to Georgia Tech is I talked to a lot of seniors and juniors. I became friends with them. And then they would, would be like, hey, could you review my resume? And they would, they would. And then I would be like, hey, I have an interview coming up for Amazon. Could you give me some pointers? And they would. Once again, just try to meet as many people as possible in college. I don't really have many regrets from my time in college, but the one thing, I, if I could go back, I would just focus a whole lot more on just meeting and talking to more and more people because you really don't know where it's gonna lead you. Second thing that matters a lot, internships slash projects. I think this is a given because I think a lot of you here at TJ are trying to get internships even now when you're in high school. And some of you may are able to, some people are not. The tech market isn't the best in what it is now. There are certain like economic conditions that aren't necessarily favorable, but that doesn't mean that you can't do anything. In the summertime, in your winter break time, there's always something that you can do. And if you don't have any internship experience and you're trying to get some internship experience, the best thing that you could do right now is just focus on your coding projects and specifically working with things like AI, machine learning, just to enhance it. But you don't necessarily need to work with particular frameworks. That's not really what's gonna propel you. In fact, the best thing that will propel you is what I call impact driven projects. When you do a coding project with like AI, ML, or even without, just make sure there's a solid purpose behind what you're doing. When I was in university, I developed this COVID-19 death predictor project. It was during the heights of the pandemic, so it was obviously very impact driven. And anytime I got into a interview, I would just point out, hey, I worked on this really cool project, and 
the recruiters would ask me about it. It would be an excellent talking point during the interview. And so you know how if you see on someone's resume that they worked at Google or Facebook or these top tech companies, they're like, oh, wow, you're a legit engineer. You know your stuff. Similarly, you want to have that effect with your projects. When someone sees it on your resume, you want to be like, huh, that sounds very interesting. Don't do a project just for the sake of a project. Don't do a project with a particular technology just to sound cool because you're going to end up just like doing a meaningless project. As cool as like the AI and ML can get, if you do it for just like a, I don't know, like a simple weather prediction app, like how, how cool is that? Like there are millions of that. You want to do something a little more cool, a little more unique that's impact driven. And so once you have a solid amount of those projects under your belt or other like research experience under your belt, you want to throw those on your resume and then try to get internship experience as best as you can. When you enter university, your number one goal should be obviously like the networking that I mentioned, but also to get an internship as soon as you can. As a freshman, it's going to be very tough. The odds aren't necessarily in your favor, but if you keep trying and keep shooting your shot, apply to as many places as possible, hopefully you will be able to land something. And if you can't, just focus on doing more projects in the meantime till you're able to get yourself to that threshold. Well, I really hope that you guys benefited off this and that's about all I have for you. Well, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want my absolutely free tech newsletter, subscribe down below in the description. And if you're interested in what software engineers actually do on a day-to-day -day basis, you might like this video right here.